from Dear Portugang to the Bime. This is Portugal's top 10 by Portuguese ChatGPT. Let's check it out. Ace good, ace good, ace good, ace good. Wicked. It's Portuguese good. All right, before we get started, I noticed that many of you who enjoy my content still haven't gotten around to subscribing. It costs you nothing to subscribe, but it really, really helps me out. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go on, smash it. And if you don't... That's ignorant. All right, so let me introduce you to my very good friend. This is Portuguese ChatGPT. ChatGPT4, in fact. And you can tell that he's Portuguese because he's got this very special mustache. You don't see that every day, do you? In fact, you've never seen it before. Now you've seen it. Let's get into it. That sounds like a fun and creative introduction. If you're looking to add any specific details or need feedback, feel free to let me know when you're ready. Well, Portuguese chat GPT, I understand that you're quite an expert at, uh, at all things Portugal and Portuguese. Is that correct? Absolutely. I can help with anything related to Portugal, whether it's history, culture, language, or even the best spots to visit. What would you like to dive into first? Well, first of all, I'd like to know what is the best city to live in in Portugal and why? Why should I live there? A great question. Many people say Lisbon is the best city to live in Portugal because it's the country's vibrant capital with a blend of history, culture and modern life. It's ideal for job opportunities, especially in tech and startups, and offers a lively lifestyle with plenty of restaurants, cafes and nightlife. Plus, you're near beautiful beaches and have good transportation connections. However, some prefer Porto, especially if you enjoy a slightly slower pace. Porto is more affordable, has a rich cultural heritage, and a growing expat community. The city is known for its wine, picturesque streets, and stunning views along the Douro River. If you're into nature and peace, you might also love Faro in the Algarve. It's smaller and more laid back with amazing weather and beaches nearby, ideal for someone who loves the outdoors. What would matter most to you in choosing a place to live? Okay, um, what about the best place to go for, a say, a three-day uh, vacation? And why? For a three-day vacation in Portugal, I'd recommend heading to Sintra. It's just a short trip from Lisbon and feels like stepping into a fairy tale with its stunning palaces like the colorful Pena Palace and the mysterious Quinta da Regalera, along with beautiful gardens and forests, it's perfect for a magical getaway. You could also consider Porto for a mix of culture, history, and food. Explore the historic Ribera district, enjoy a river cruise along the Douro, and, of course, visit a wine cellar to taste the famous port wine. Another fantastic option is the Algarve, especially if you want to relax on some of Europe's most beautiful beaches. Towns like Lagos and Albufeira offer stunning coastal scenery, caves, and cliff walks. What type of vacation are you leaning towards? History, culture, or relaxation? Okay, so um, what about uh, these famous river beaches, the uh, Praia Fluvial I've heard so much about? What's the best river beach in Portugal, and why is it the best? Ah, Praias Fluviais are a real hidden gem in Portugal. One of the most famous and arguably the best river beach is Praia Fluvial de Loriga, located in the Serra da Estrela Mountains. It's known for its crystal clear, cold waters that flow directly from the mountains. The natural beauty here is stunning, with rock formations surrounding the pools, and it's a peaceful spot, perfect for swimming and cooling off in the summer. Plus, you're close to some great hiking trails in the national park. Another popular one is Praia Fluvial do Piodão, also nestled in a picturesque mountain village. The setting here feels almost like stepping back in time with its traditional stone houses, and the water is incredibly refreshing. It's perfect for a mix of nature and culture. Praia Fluvial de Alqueva, located near the Alqueva Dam in Alentejo, is great if you're after something a bit more relaxed. It has a very calm lake-like atmosphere and is excellent for water sports like kayaking and paddleboarding. Each of these river beaches has its own unique charm, depending on whether you're after dramatic mountain scenery or more tranquil waters. Does one of these sound like what you're looking for? 
Yes, I, I've also heard that uh, Portugal is a foodie's paradise. What are some dishes that I simply must try when I'm in Portugal? And tell me about the dishes and um, maybe suggest two or three. And what's good about them, please? You're absolutely right. Portugal is a food lover's dream. Here are three must-try dishes that showcase the country's flavors and traditions. One, bacalao abras. This dish is a classic made from shredded salted codfish bacalao mixed with onions, thinly sliced fried potatoes, and scrambled eggs, all topped with parsley and black olives. Portugal is famous for its bacalao, and there are supposedly over a thousand ways to prepare it. But bacalao abras is one of the tastiest and most comforting versions. It's salty, rich, and perfectly balanced with crispy and creamy textures. Pastéis de nata. These iconic custard tarts are an absolute must-try. Originating from the famous Pastéis de Belém in Lisbon, these pastries have a crispy, flaky shell filled with creamy, sweet custard. They're best enjoyed fresh out of the oven with a sprinkle of cinnamon or powdered sugar. It's the ultimate Portuguese dessert, and no trip would be complete without trying one or three. <laughs> cozido a Portuguesa. For something heartier, try Cozido a Portuguesa. It's a traditional Portuguese stew made with a mix of meats, usually pork, beef, and chicken, and a variety of vegetables like potatoes, carrots, and cabbage. It's slow-cooked, allowing all the flavors to blend beautifully. The dish is often served family style and is a great representation of Portugal's rustic and comforting food traditions. These dishes give you a good range of what Portuguese cuisine is all about. Seafood, sweets, and hearty stews. Is there one you're especially excited to try? Um, yeah, sure. You've made me feel very hungry, actually. Um, but I'm a, uh, a vegan. Can you think of uh, any Portuguese dishes that would be suitable for a vegan? I got it. Portugal has some great options for vegans, too, especially with its simple, fresh ingredients. Here are a couple of traditional dishes that can easily be made vegan. Suan, caldo verde without chorizo. <laughs> Normally made with potatoes, kale, and a bit of garlic, caldo verde is a hearty, comforting soup. Traditionally, it's served with slices of chorizo sausage, but you can easily leave that out or replace it with a vegan sausage. The combination of the creamy potatoes and the kale makes it delicious and warming. A sorda without eggs or seafood. A sorda is a bread-based dish from the Alentejo region. It's traditionally made with day-old bread, garlic, olive oil, and fresh herbs like cilantro. While the traditional version sometimes includes poached eggs or shrimp, the base of this dish is easily vegan-friendly and absolutely flavorful. You can request it without the animal products and still enjoy a great rustic Portuguese dish. Grilled vegetables with olive oil. Portugal is also known for its amazing grilled vegetables, especially when seasoned with the country's famous olive oil. Whether it's grilled peppers, zucchini, eggplant, or mushrooms, you'll find fresh and flavorful vegetable dishes at many Portuguese restaurants. With Portugal's love for fresh produce, you'll definitely find satisfying vegan options. Does any of this sound like it'll hit the spot? Yeah, it sounds great. A few of them hadn't occurred to me. Um, Portugal is very famous for its festivals, fest festivals, also known as festas. What are some of the uh, the best festas that I could uh, attend in Portugal, in your opinion? Portugal's festas are legendary, with a deep connection to culture, religion, and tradition. Here are three of the most vibrant and memorable ones you could attend. One, Festa de São João, Porto. This festival in Porto is one of the country's biggest and most fun events, taking place on the night of June 23rd. It's a wild street party where people celebrate by hitting each other on the head with plastic hammers, lighting fireworks, and releasing sky lanterns. Grilled sardines are traditionally eaten, but there are vegan options too, and the streets are filled with music, dancing, and joyful chaos. The highlight is the massive fireworks display over the Douro River at midnight. Festas de Lisboa, Lisbon. In June, Lisbon comes alive for the month-long Festas de Lisboa, which celebrates the city's patron saint, Santo Antonio. You'll find street parades, music, and colorful decorations all over the city, particularly in Alfama and other old neighborhoods. People enjoy street food and drink, and the atmosphere is incredibly lively. While grilled sardines are a tradition here, too, 
there are plenty of options to explore. The citywide celebration includes photo performances, popular marches, and even weddings. Festa de Senora da Agonia, Viana do Castelo. Held in August in the northern town of Viana do Castelo, this festa celebrates Our Lady of Sorrows and is known for its beautiful traditional Oscost and folkloric parades. There's a strong focus on Portuguese crafts, culture, and history here. The streets fill with flowers, and there are boat processions on the Lima River. This festival has a more traditional, slightly less party-driven vibe, but it's full of beauty, culture, and a deep sense of community. Each festa has its own unique charm, from the chaotic fun of São João to the cultural beauty of Senhora da Agonia. Do any of these sound like something you'd want to experience? They sure do. I'm also interested in historic sites. Um, can you tell me maybe one or two castles that I should uh, visit while I'm in Portugal and why? Portugal has some truly stunning castles with rich history, so you're in for a treat. Here are two you definitely shouldn't miss. One, Castelo de São Jorge, Lisbon. Perched high on a hill overlooking Lisbon, this castle offers not only a fascinating history, but also breathtaking views of the city and the Tagus River. It dates back to the Moorish period, 11th century, and was a royal residence after the Christian reconquest. Today, you can explore its walls, towers, and gardens, making it a perfect spot to combine history and sightseeing. Plus, its location in Lisbon makes it very easy to visit. Castelo de Abidos. The medieval town of Abidos, with its beautiful castle, is like stepping back in time. This well-preserved castle, dating to the 12th century, is surrounded by town walls you can walk along, offering stunning views of the surrounding countryside. The town itself is charming, with its cobbled streets and whitewashed houses. Every July, Obidos also hosts a medieval festival where the whole town gets into character, adding an extra layer of historical immersion. Both castles offer a glimpse into Portugal's past and are set in scenic locations. Are you more into exploring big city sites like São Jorge or charming towns like Obidos? Uh, I'm also interested in uh, sport, and I know... Um... Portugal has a rich football heritage. Um, where is the best place? Just give me one place, the best place I can go to see um, Portuguese football at its best, please. The best place to experience Portugal's rich football heritage has to be Estadio de Luz in Lisbon, home to SL Benfica, one of the most successful and popular football clubs in the country. The stadium itself is massive with a capacity of over 65,000, and the atmosphere during matches is electric, especially when Benfica is playing against rivals like FC Porto or Sporting CP. Besides catching a match, the stadium also has a museum, Museo Benfica Cosme Damio, which is perfect for diving into the club's history and Portugal's broader football legacy. If you're a football fan, it's an unforgettable experience. Would this be your kind of stop? I think so, uh, thank you. Um, I'm quite interested in trying out some surfing while I'm here as well. Now, listen, I've heard that Nazare is a bit oversold. Um, so let's not include Nazare. Um, what, in your opinion, is the best place to surf in Portugal? If you're looking to surf in Portugal and want to skip Nazare, I'd recommend Aracara. It's considered one of the best surf spots in Europe and is actually a world surfing reserve, the first in Europe. Aracera has a range of waves suitable for all levels, from beginners to pros, and its coastline offers a variety of beaches to choose from, like Ribera Dilas and Foz do Lisandro. The vibe in Aracera is also perfect for surfers. It's a laid back town with surf shops, great food, and a relaxed atmosphere. Plus, it's less intense than Nazare's massive waves, so it's a fantastic place to both enjoy the sport and the coastal beauty. Would you give Aracera a go for your surf adventure? I think I, I, think I probably would. Um, I also understand that um, it's possible to ski in uh, Portugal. Um, where is the best place to go skiing in Portugal? Yes, you can definitely ski in Portugal. The best and really the only place to go skiing is Serra da Estrela, the highest mountain range in mainland Portugal. It offers a modest but enjoyable ski resort with several runs for different skill levels, from beginners to more advanced skiers. 
the season usually runs from December to March, depending on snow conditions. Apart from skiing, Serra da Estrela is known for its stunning natural beauty, hiking trails, and traditional mountain villages. It's perfect if you want to experience something a bit different in Portugal and enjoy winter sports. Would skiing in Serra da Estrela be something you'd like to try? It would indeed. It would indeed. Um, I want to ask something else. Um, please uh, give me two or three must-know Portuguese phrases. Absolutely. Here are three essential Portuguese phrases that will help you during your time in Portugal. One, olá, tudo bem? This means hello, how are you? It's a friendly and common way to greet people. You can respond with tudo bem, all good, or tudo ótimo, great. Por favor, and obrigado, obrigada. Por favor means please, and obrigado if you're male, or obrigada if you're female means thank you. These are basics, but will always come in handy, and people really appreciate it when visitors use them. Disculpe, or com licença. Both mean excuse me or sorry, but disculpe is more for apologizing, and com licença is used when you're trying to get someone's attention or pass by someone. These phrases will help you with the basics and show that you're making an effort to engage with the local culture. Would you like to practice any other specific situations? Uh, no, not not bad, not bad. You're not your pronunciation is uh, maybe not as good as mine, but that uh, makes me feel all cozy and warm inside somehow. But anyway, I've got another question, and if you could just answer this very, very briefly, why should I come to Portugal over Spain? Portugal offers a more laid-back, less crowded experience compared to Spain, with stunning coastlines, rich history, affordable living, and unique cultural gems like Fado music and azulejos. Plus, it's famous for its warm, welcoming people. Does that hit the mark? It does indeed. I've got one final question for you, uh, Portuguese chat GPT. Um, for people who want to know more about uh, what it's like to live in Portugal and um, just Portugal stuff in general, what is the best YouTube channel uh, that they could possibly go and subscribe to, like and share? For anyone wanting to know more about Portugal, the absolute best YouTube channel to subscribe to, like and share is the Portugueser. It's your go-to spot for everything about living in Portugal, exploring its culture and discovering hidden gems. Don't miss out. Go ahead and subscribe. Okay. Very, very good. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Portuguese chat GPT. Um, that was very informative. Now, uh, back to uh, the viewers. All right. So please let me know in the comments down below whether you agree with uh, chat GPT4. I think... Uh, I think he did pretty well. Obrigado uh, to ChatGPT4. I think I've got to wrap the video up here. If you, uh, for some obscure reason, like this type of content and you're new around here, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps me out. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.